Hi there, my name is Victoria Bowler and today we are talking about some approaches you might take to creative listening. There are so many pathways to musicianship. In our music classes, we sing, we play, we move, we read, we write, we improvise, arrange, compose, we listen, and of all of those skills, there's one primary way that students engage with music outside the music room and one skill that all of the others are predicated on and that is listening. Most of our students won't leave our classrooms to become producers of music at a professional level, but all of our students are going to consume music through listening for the rest of their lives. Today we're talking about some of the ways we might use listening as a creative activity and that for some of us might beg the question, how is listening creative? When we listen to music, we are paying attention to specific elements and we make split second decisions about how to make sense of the sounds that we hear by cataloging those sounds. And how we choose to label or group or categorize and connect all of these other sounds that becomes the construction of the piece in our minds. And those choices in our mental construction of a piece are creative. When we listen to music then, we are essentially co-creating the music along with the performers. Music listening is a personal creative activity and how we listen is different from one person to another. So one person might listen to a piece of music and they might hear uh, the form or another person might listen and imagine a scene that's inspired by the music. Someone else might catalog the timbre of a specific instrument, or they might notice the way the melody is used. These decisions are based on our own backgrounds as musicians, and they include things like our aesthetic preferences or our imagination or our musical training. Listening is a creative act in and of itself, but it's also the beginning of creative outputs like improvisation or arranging or composition. After we creatively construct music through listening, we can draw on our musical vocabulary from that listening experience to improvise or compose or arrange. And we're going to draw on what we've categorized in that listening experience. The creative listening is already the beginning of thinking creatively that takes place later in the output. Let's talk about two types of listening. In general, we might categorize music listening activities as either convergent or divergent. So when we construct music listening activities, we are thinking about a specific way to listen. And both of these ways to listen are absolutely valuable and necessary in our teaching. They just serve different roles. So one focuses on right and wrong experiences and the other focuses on more creative experiences. We might decide ahead of time what we want students to listen for. So for example, we might ask students to copy our movements to the form of the piece. We might ask them to pat the steady beat or raise their hand when they hear a new voice enter or um, identify the sounds of instruments of the orchestra. And all of these have a specific correct answer. These activities are going to encourage closed answer or convergent thinking. And the goal of these experiences is for the students to arrive at the same conclusion as the teacher. That's different from divergent listening. Creative listening is more open answer, it's divergent. In this type of listening, there are lots of possible correct answers because there are many possible ways of interpreting sounds. The goal of divergent listening experiences is for students to come up with their own answers instead of always arriving at the teacher's conclusion. So here are some creative listening prompts that you can drag and drop into your classroom to use right away. The first one is just, what does this music make you think of? This one is simple. Students will just listen to the music and discuss what they think about when they hear it. Next is the very popular, draw what you think about when you listen to this music. Listening to the music first and then inviting students to draw second can help their artistic representation of the piece be a little bit more purposeful. This is especially helpful if the piece has a lot of contrasting sections, um, maybe of emotional or musical elements. Next, if this piece accompanied a story, what would that story be? Students could draw their ideas, maybe as a graphic novel, or they could write the story just in a narrative form. Um, they could turn it into a dance or they could act it out with a friend. 
Next, how could we move to this piece? Again, this is one that is helpful to encourage students to think about their idea first and then move. Because sometimes, like with the drawing activity, the movement itself can take over the listening experience. And that wouldn't serve our purpose for this particular activity. So students might imagine moving in their heads first, and then they could show their movement in place, non-locomotor. And then if they want, they might travel around the room, locomotor. Next is what do you notice or what do you notice about something specific? Because simply asking students to share what they notice about a music can result in some really thoughtful and interesting conversations. Students might just write down as many characteristics of the music that they think of or you might provide them with some musical categories. So things like pitch or rhythm or harmony, um, things like that. John Kratis has done some really amazing work around this topic if you'd like to know more about this particular pathway of listening. Another idea is what do you notice about this music that no one else might notice? And so with this prompt, we're specifically looking for divergent answers. We're looking for how different students might uh, interpret these sounds. This is a type of creative listening that differs from the other prompts because students are intentionally trying to come up with answers that they think no one else would think of. And again, um, John Kratis's work has a lot more details about this pathway of listening. Next, what do you think the composer or the performer or the creator of this music wanted you to feel while you listen? This prompt can tie into some social and emotional competencies as well. With older students, we can frame the question around what the composer might want us to feel, and that gives some degree of separation between the student and the emotion, and that makes the experience a little bit less vulnerable, which is um, an important thing, especially with some of these older students. With younger students, you might consider using a class stuffed animal and asking what the animal might feel when it listens. And the difference here is between taking on a personal emotional experience experience, like this music makes me feel, and then taking an emotional experience and using empathy for what someone else might be experiencing. So after students have had a few listening experiences with the music, they might create their own piece that has the same emotional effect as the piece they listen to in class. Um, in real life, this is the job that film composers take on. The director often gives the composers a temp track and the composer is tasked to create their own original work that gives the listener the same emotional experience. So just like in real life, after completing the previous activity where students thought about the, motion, the emotional impact um, of the music, they could get into small groups and create their own piece. And then students can check their work by listening to the piece again to make sure that their own creation is on the right track. And then kind of along those same lines, what if we can join in on the music by adding our own improvisation? So another way to move creative listening towards creative output is through improvisation. Students might quietly um, just clap along with the recording. And as long as they can still hear the recorded music above their own improvisation, their volume level would be considered appropriate. There are a few things that we can keep in mind to have successful creative listening experiences. The first one has to do with how we source music for creative listening. The resources available for selecting creative music listening experiences are endless. I recommend Smithsonian Folkways and Classics for Kids as good starting points. We want to choose music that expands our students' ears and their musical perceptions, but it's definitely a good idea to choose pieces that we would expect students to be drawn to, and that is just like any other repertoire selection process. Next is the length of listening, and this is um, maybe the most significant change that we might consider with listening experiences. So depending on the purpose of the activity, it's not necessary to listen to the whole piece of music in one sitting. 
Um, in fact, the vast majority of the time, the shorter experiences are preferable to these longer listening experiences. So students might listen to maybe 20 seconds to maybe a minute, um, depending on their age. And when a listening experience has gone on too long, it will be really easy for us to tell because the students are going to start squirming or whispering each other, whispering to each other, and, and that's our cue that it's time to move on. Repeated listenings can also be really beneficial. The more familiar we are with the music, the more we are likely to enjoy it. So it's okay to listen to the same piece in small increments over several different lessons. And this helps students develop a layered understanding of the piece. So there it is. This is a framework for listening that uses student imagination instead of putting the teacher at the center of learning exclusively. Now, that said, creative listening is not necessarily superior to convergent listening. It's good for us to teach students both ways to listen. These are some ideas that you can use in the classroom right away to encourage creative listening skills in your students. If you have used any of these ideas in your teaching already, or if you think some of them might be fun to use in your classroom, I would love to hear from you. You can drop a comment below. You could shoot me an email, victoria at victoriabowler.com, or you can find me on Instagram. I am at victoriabowler. Thank you so much for watching and happy teaching.